This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. So we really appreciate you making some time for us this weekend. Got a chance to watch a little bit of the selection show on, on Sunday. What What is that like as a coach to sit with your team? And I know you guys knew you were going to be hosting a regional, but just to see the other teams that you'll be competing against this weekend. Oh, it's such a, it's such a fun night when you get to sit there and know that all the hard work that they've poured into the year has led to knowing that your name's going to be called I think that's a really nice thing going into that knowing your name's going to be called uh, but it's just it's just fun it's just this is the the best part of the year and they've worked their butts off and they know their name's going to be up on the board and um, it's just you just don't know when and who's coming and so it's just really exciting coach you gave your team a day off yesterday what is today going to look like as they get back into it after really not playing since Thursday well, it's it's just starting to prep for the three opponents that we have this weekend. So yesterday, um, we have to give the day off because we're planning on playing through Sunday. Um, but it's just uh, it's nice. It gave us time to kind of dive into Oregon and Notre Dame and Harvard and see what they do. And, and so we'll start prepping for that starting today. Yeah. So. Um, these these players are ready to go, and so it'll be it'll be a fun week. What is the prep process like? I mean. We're blessed to get to watch all of the games that, that your team plays on the SEC Network Plus when you're at home and on the road in conference play. Is it easy to always find, like, Harvard game tape? How, how does that process work when not every conference is blessed with a conference network like, like we have here? Yeah, well, the video, I mean, the whole process has gotten so much easier, and, and it's just uh, so we use a, a software that loads games throughout the year. So any game that's on or um, – any game that a, a team that uses the software that we use, um, it all goes into this database. So we can start watching video and, and we have plenty of games on everybody that we play. And then we start diving into numbers. We start diving into matchups and, and uh, trying to figure out the best way to approach each team. Yeah. Let's talk about some of your girls because uh, it's been really fun. I think for a lot of fans to, to get to know your team and, and players like Rylan Hedgecock and, and Reagan Johnson, how rewarding is it for you to, to see their growth and the and the way your your team has performed this year? Well, it's really rewarding. I mean, that's the that's what it's all about is just to see them grow on and off the field and and um, and get to have a front row seat for it. But they are tremendous athletes and they're even better people. And so it's been really fun to see this team come together. It's been an interesting journey, especially coming off last year, but. We've learned a lot of lessons along the way that I think that are going to pay us back this time of year. Coach, you're talking about that journey. You got a young team, and I know with young teams, there's highs, there are lows. So how have you had to manage that differently than last year's more veteran squad? Well, last year's team had been there and done that. They've they had, they had already kind of rode those as they grew up in this game at this level, and so um, it's just it's mostly learning how to talk to them, you know, learning how to teach them how to um, be resilient, how to, how to bounce back after a loss, how to not give it too much weight, how to, um, you know, when you're coming in off of the levels that they've played, um, you're not going to necessarily perform at that same level because it's the SEC and it's the best of the best. And so um, dealing with failure recovery a little bit more and, and so there's just a lot more teaching. Um, there's a lot more patience. <laughs> I think you can maybe see my gray hair through the radio. Um, but it, it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's just part of it. And it's been a good challenge. It's been an interesting challenge, but it's, it's been fun. And, and um, just to see the growth, you know, you just know that it's coming together. So it's, that's what it's all about, the coaching piece. Coach, who's the, who's the leader in that locker room? Who's the alpha? You know what? It's you know it's probably a leadership by co by committee, but Shanice Dels has really stepped up in the leadership role this year, um, and and then beyond that, it's Christina Foreman, Kylie Halverson, Hannah Gamble, Rylan Hedgecock. They all have their way of leading, um, and it's not just one dominant leader, but they they take care of each other as a collective group. Yeah. You mentioned Janice there, who's got a an ERA below two. For all of us that don't understand what 
makes her technique and her performance so special. Explain it to us because she's 20 and 9 for you this year, started 21 games, appeared in 36 as I read her stat line. What makes her such a special pitcher for your team? Well, if I could clone her and keep her forever, I would want to do that. So, um, you know, she is, she's just a competitor. She's a competitor and she doesn't ride the highs and lows and she's just so like thinking consistent. Um, so it's, it just says a lot to your team when your pitcher goes out there, your, your ace pitcher. And, and you know, when she goes out there, she's going to give you everything that she has and she's going to give you a chance to win and just allowing your team to kind of settle in. Um, the youth of the team, all you know, all of it to settle in and say, hey, I got you until until we can get this. It's huge. But, I mean, she has some of the, the biggest vertical break in the game. She's um, She throws at a high velo, and she just has the ability to just hold big offenses. Um, so she's, she's very, very special. <laughs> Put it into perspective for those that are still finding the sport about the difficulty of the SEC and – um, the, the national competitiveness of, of the league you play in and how tough it is. You just look up and down the, the selections for the postseason. It becomes pretty evident. And then I think also about Oklahoma, who may be the gold standard in the sport. They're joining the league soon. Uh, give our audience just an idea of, uh, of the greatness of, of this conference in softball. Well, I don't know if I can even put it into words. But, um, you know, it's, I think that the most telling thing is um, – you know, when you talk to people around the SEC, around, you know, Commissioner Sankey and, and Hunter and everybody that sees it, they they think the softball side of it is even more competitive than football. Um, and so it's when you have 13 teams and 12 are in the postseason, and quite, quite honestly, the 13th team um, had a resume that's maybe more competitive than some that got in. Um and then you, and then in, you know, in a year or two, we're adding Oklahoma and we're adding Texas, who are both national seeds. Oklahoma being number one, I think Texas went just a couple behind us, maybe. Um, and and so there, there's just no let up. the The strength of this conference from top to bottom um, is unmatched in the country. And even when you look at our conference tournament, and you have South Carolina, who finished tenth in the regular season, and they're in the in the championship game. It is a conference where anybody can beat anybody, and it's just a grind, and it's the gauntlet, and um, and it's the best. <laughs> That's why you do it. You get to play against the best every weekend. What did you see with this program that enticed you to come here several years ago? You were out west in a very successful uh, program uh, as an assistant. What was it about this opportunity that you saw the potential in? Well, I had watched the SEC um, really closely and just kind of knew that, I mean, you've mentioned gold standard for Oklahoma, but the SEC is the gold standard for softball um, and, and just the competitive level in the exposure and the stage that they create and the resources that they support their student athletes. Um, and I had had some friends that worked at Arkansas. And so I watched it a little closer and kind of always wondered, you know, why can't it get going there? You know, and um I was fortunate enough to get the call. I actually came from Maryland. I was head coach at Maryland there for a year um, before getting the call from Arkansas. And once you get here, you realize very quickly how special this place is. And, and you just, I felt, I knew right away that everything was in place here to get this going. Um, and fortunately, we had some pretty great athletes that believed me. <laughs> We're talking with Coach Courtney Diefel this morning, kind enough to join us, getting ready for their Fayetteville Regional this weekend. Coach, I want to ask you about this regional. Very similar to last year. I know, you, I know you spoke to it after the selection. Oregon was here last year. You guys played Princeton last year, and now you're playing another Ivy League school in, in Harvard. Is there any similarities that you could take away from last year and use them to your advantage this year? Yeah, I mean a little bit being being somewhat familiar with Oregon and um and and knowing that I think they're an even stronger team than they were last year. I mean, this was a really tough regional. I think we got a really tough draw. I think we're one of the probably the three toughest um regionals in the country. Um and and so it's but everyone's tough at this time of year. And so just um having that familiarity a little bit with Oregon is is nice. Um kind of tracking the Ivy League, knowing that Princeton, who came last year, and Harvard were in the championship. Um, so kind of seeing seeing that. And then Notre Dame, one of my best friends, coaches for Notre Dame, so tracking them pretty closely throughout the season. Um, it's going to be an exciting 
regional. It's going to be great softball, and um, and we have a really, really tough challenge ahead of us. I know you can still get GA tickets for the berm this weekend. What's crazy to me is in 2010 when the SEC tournament was here, there was less than 5,000 people that showed up. There was nearly 17,000 that made their way to Bogle Park this weekend in Fayetteville. You've spoken to how much Arkansas fans have embraced softball. I mean, how long do you think that's taken for for them to come around with your program? Um, well, <laughs> I think it's I think it's been relatively quick. I, I think when we got here, we knew that this fan base um, there was something really unique about it, and we're like, if we give them a product that they want to follow, they are going to show up for us. And and so that was one of our goals from the jump. And and each year we've gained more and more fans and and gained them a little earlier. <laughs> earlier in, the, in when my time here, they would come, but they came when it was warm and just like the SEC, you know, matchups. But now they show up big time for us from from the start. And they're they're. I mean, Hawk fans are the best. I know I'm a little biased, but they are the best. And um, how they've embraced softball. I mean. For us to be this past weekend with a conference tournament, it was the most attended conference tournament and yeah. in the history of the conference tournament. I mean, that's really, that says it all right there. Um, they've embraced softball. They've embraced this program. And um, it's just tremendous the way that they um, follow this team and the way that they just cheer for softball and this, and this group. And they're just so loyal and they create one of the most electric atmospheres in college softball. And, um, and I, we're just, we just feel really lucky that we have them and to be a part of it. Yeah. It shattered the previous record by like 2000 fans. Now, speaking of fans, has coach Pittman RSVP already for this weekend? Have you <laughs> talked with him? I know he's recruiting. He better be there. Well, he was really bummed this past weekend because he's had so many official visits and his official visit coming in on Thursday night, the flight was delayed. He's like, I was going to be there and now I have to. <laughs> So he's he's incredible, and I would um, I would be shocked if he wasn't there this weekend. I bet he's there. I want to ask <laughs> you, um, what is the SEC Network Plus and just the ability for fans to access watching your games? What what has that meant for the growth here and also for the sport as a whole? Well, it's, I mean, it's everything. I, I mean, I go back. I'm old now, but I go back to when I played, and only the World Series teams were, or the World Series games were on TV. And now you're looking at thousands of regular season games. It's grown the sport in, in ways that I don't think we can even put words to, but it's, it's really impacted the growth of softball in Arkansas. And I think the cool thing is talking to people that my friends here or that have older daughters and younger daughters and, and maybe five years ago, their older do- you know, the older daughters went through just wanting to play basketball and soccer because they just didn't know what softball was. They didn't see it a lot. Um, and now softball is the sport that young girls want to play. And I think right there, that, that says everything. Um, just the exposure of being able to see it. It's such a dynamic athletic sport, but it's also a good mix of personality and, and just connecting with the athlete. And um, I just, I, I just think it's it's so great. The exposure has absolutely changed the game for softball, and it's the most exciting time to be a part of it. Yeah, I want to ask you about the change on the youth level because this weekend is the state championships for high school teams. That's going to be played down in, in central Arkansas, but uh, there's several northwest Arkansas teams well represented in, in, uh, in, in those championship games. Well, what have you seen statewide, and what's been the, the biggest mark of difference since you arrived and what you're seeing now as far as youth level and, and high school softball? Well, it just keeps getting better and better. And I, I think one of the biggest things that a lot of people don't don't get is that the state of Arkansas was late to fast pitch softball. They played slow pitch for a long time. And so they've been kind of playing catch up in, in that regard. And um, the level just keeps getting higher and higher. And they just keep getting creating, producing better athletes. And um, it's it's been fun to watch that growth. It's also fun to the state championship used to be played at Bogle. Yeah. And, um, and I know initially, um, when they had to move it to Benton, I think that they were pretty upset because obviously Bogle's, you know, the best stadium. I think it's one of the best in the country, but, um, I, I kind of like that they had to move it because that's become, that means we've become yeah. a staple in, in postseason softball. So, um, it's, uh, it's, it's just been really fun and, um, it's, 
I guess, rewarding. And we've used that word a couple times to see the growth of softball in state. Coach, you mentioned Bogle Park. I want to ask you one last question before you go. Second highest attendance in all of softball this season on average, and that's with the seating chart being the way it is, but you guys are stuffing the berm each and every weekend. I know this is probably an off-season conversation, but have you and Hunter or anyone else within the athletic department discussed possible renovations with widening or strengthening? How would that work if you guys added seats to Bogle Park? Well, it's pretty fun that we get to start maybe talking about that. And uh, so, yeah, we have um, we actually are adding um, onto our facility in the next year and a half, um, taking our offices and expanding our team room and locker room and everything. And part of that is adding, um, you know, a few more like boxes and stuff down the line. But I'm going to tell you, it's it's pretty fun to get to start pushing that a little bit and saying, hey, what are when can we start talking about uh, stadium, you know, capacity expansion, because these fans have showed up and, and made that conversation a reality. And um, it's, it's just really exciting. Well, Courtney, it's going to be really exciting this weekend when you guys take on Harvard this Friday at six thirty. cannot wait for that. We really appreciate this. You joining us this morning and best of luck to you and the ladies this weekend, taking on the Crimson. Well, of course, thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. BetOnline.ag is your number one source for all your basketball info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest player reports for this year's pro basketball playoffs. BetOnline is always your sports information headquarters this season, as we have you covered for all your sports wagering needs. Basketball, MLB, NHL hockey, right down to UFC and boxing. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way for you to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games you can play right from your home. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's B L E A V. B L E A V. Bet online. Where the game starts.